Metal Jesus here, and I am back with Roxy. And today we are going to correct an oversight on my channel that is overdue for far too long. And that is we are going to play Hero on the Atari 2600. Now, I've been wanting to do this for a while now because as you guys know, if you watch my videos, I highlight this game in every single one of them. It's my favorite Atari game by far. And I know a lot of people have heard about it. Some people maybe have never seen someone play it, so I'm gonna do that for you today. But I'm gonna go a step further. I've actually busted out my original Atari 2600. And the reason for that is, is because in order to play this game properly, I really feel like you need to use an actual Atari joystick. Yes, it's a joystick, not a controller. I know, such a funny name, right? But I really do feel like this is the way to play this game. It's optimized for this controller. So we're gonna do that, but just be aware it's analog, it's kind of fuzzy, so you know, I, I've tried to clean up the footage as much as possible, but it's still a kick-ass game. I think you guys are gonna love it. You ready to do it? All right, let's take a look. And here is Hero, running on actual Atari hardware, captured in analog as it's meant to be captured. Oh yes. So Hero stands for Helicopter Emergency Rescue Operation. And you play as uh, Roderick Hero, I believe. So first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about the controls because they're, they're kind of different. Now keep in mind that the Atari joystick only has one button and you can only go in certain directions. So it starts off right here and you have the power meter, which is kind of like a timer and you have three lives and you have six sticks of dynamite. Now you can go left or right, but the thing about this game is that you have a helicopter pack on your back. And essentially what happens is that when you push up, your helicopter blades start to spin for a second. And so there's a little bit of a delay as you start to lift off. And this is the tricky part of this game. This is the reason why you need this controller. So what I'm doing right now is basically flying through the first couple levels. These levels are pretty simple. And, oh my God, I play this game literally at least a couple times a year. And I have since it came out in 1984. So what you're really seeing here is just memorization. You know those games that you play as a kid and you play them over and over and over again? Well, with Hero, I know probably the first eight or 10 levels pretty well. I mean, uh, as it goes on, there's definitely some tricky parts, but for the most part, I can just blaze through these first couple levels. So a lot's going on here and I, I kind of want to describe what's happening, but um, essentially a couple things here is that you'll notice that every once in a while the lights turn out, like right there. That is kind of annoying because essentially you can't see anything once you break the lamps that are down in these mines. And so you memorization is a big key to this game. Also, when you light a stick of dynamite, it will light up slightly. Which, uh, which really, really helps to, to try to get through this, these levels quickly. And again, I, I, I know I'm kind of flying through this game at this point, but uh, these first couple levels, man, I mean, I could play them probably in my sleep. I think one of the challenges of this game when newcomers come to play it is that it can seem just kind of like overwhelming, like you don't know where to go. Pretty much what you need to do in this game is just simply keep going down until you, you hit either magma or water. And then you either go left or right to find the miner and basically rescue the miner. Um, a couple things to note here is that, like I mentioned, that you get six sticks of dynamite per level and that replenishes every level. And the good news is, is that that's all you need. Now you can waste dynamite on accident and um, kind of screw yourself over because there is the, the power, there is the timer that's ticking. Now, if you do that, you can use the laser that's built into your helmet to shoot through thin walls, but it takes a while. And there are times whenever that will add precious time to your, uh, to your, you know, or it takes off precious power essentially. And so you can kind of screw yourself uh, if, if you waste dynamite. 
Another thing about the dynamite is that, and you're, you're noticing it here, is that um, all you need to do is take a few steps away from the dynamite to not get blown up. But it gives you just barely enough time to do that. I mean, that's one of the challenges of this game is that you'll drop a stick of dynamite and then you quickly have to run to the left or the, or the right and uh, hopefully protect yourself. Now, one of the caveats to that is that if you are in flight, so let's say you're at the on an edge, you drop a stick of dynamite, you can very quickly kind of fall off the edge and with your back to the dynamite, you'll be okay. And you're gonna see more and more of that on later levels here. And speaking of levels, this game has 20 regular levels. And I would love to tell you that I have mastered them, and sadly that is not the case. You know, for a game that I've literally played for, well, if it came on 84, what is that, like 30 years? Uh, you would think that I would have this game mastered, but I haven't actually. I, I can only get to about level 18, and then this game just gets so difficult. Now, there are people out there who can beat this game and uh, beat it well. The trick to this whole game is, really, is the mastering of flight and the way that that, that helicopter pack works. It's really weird because essentially, again, you start pushing up on the joystick, your propeller blades take a second to lift you off, and then you just kind of tap up to, to stay in the air. And then if you need to go down, you have to kind of time it r right to catch yourself. It's really tricky to do. And on later levels, when there's magma and there's these, uh, these creatures that are going really fast, it can be damn near impossible to do. I mean, hats off to people who do it. I know there's people on Atari age who can get over a million points or something like that in this game. Uh, I cannot get anywhere near that. But I do feel like I'm, I'm pretty decent at this game. I've watched other footage of people trying to play Hero, and for the most part, they don't get as far as I do. And um, you know, I'd love to be one of those people who can just master this game, but uh, that doesn't mean that I don't have a lot of fun playing this game. I, it, it's so much challenge and nostalgia for me that I always come back to it. So now we are on level 11, and this is where the game starts to pick up and get pretty challenging. The creatures in the mine start get to getting faster. Um, there's more magma, which you can't touch, those walls that are blinking red. Um, there's, there's tricky points, like for instance right there, if I had gone left, th there that's a no-win situation. So you have to go right, but you notice as soon as I get through there though, it knocks out the lights. And so, so much of this game is just memorization. It's just nutty. This right here is also tricky too, because again, you saw that I almost touched the magma down below there. And it's so easy to do because you essentially have to allow yourself to drop and then catch yourself by pushing up. It looks really easy on the screen, but if you play this game, you know that it's definitely a timing issue. And one, for, for whatever reason, I have just not been able to completely master 100%. Um, I'm sure that if I, I don't know, maybe put in more time or something like that, that I could get really, really good at. So um, here we are at level 11, and I'm doing pretty good. You get a new... Uh, a new hero every 20,000 points. So right here, I'm, I'm doing pretty awesome. Um, not too bad, although, you know, in this game, I, I know the pain is coming. <laughs> the pain's coming quick. I think for a lot of people like me, when this game came out in 84, I was honestly pretty tired of the really crappy arcade ports and just shovelware that the Atari was getting at the time. I was really, in 1984, I was a very young kid and I was really just into arcade machines. Also, I was starting to look at the computer, you know, things like the Commodore 64 or the VIC-20. Um, I think a, a friend of mine had a, a TI-99, a Texas Instruments computer. And so at this time, you know, for me, the, the Atari was starting to feel a little old. And then out of nowhere comes Hero. And for those of you who collect for Atari or, or know a little bit about the history, 99% of the Atari games do not look like this. There's very few that have multiple levels like this. Uh, the only other game that really comes to mind, which is also excellent, is Pitfall 2. But those games are very few and far between. So when this came out, I was like blown away. And it was 
an Atari exclusive. It wasn't based on an arcade game. The only place you could originally play this was the Atari. And so I just poured myself into this. Me and my cousin actually just played this every single day and just had a blast. Now, speaking of other systems, this game was a success despite the fact that there was a, uh, a slowdown or the video game crashed the same year. Um, but this game was considered a success and it's always been in the, the top five or top 10 of the best Atari games of all time. And so of course they ported it to a bunch of systems. I have not played all of those, although when I did get a uh, Commodore 64, I got the Commodore 64 version of this. And I have to say that is probably, um, it's hard to say if it's my favorite version of this game, but it's damn close. It feels exactly like this version, except for they actually updated the graphics slightly. On the Commodore, it actually looks a little bit more like a, uh, a mine, and because it has stalactites and it has all these kind of like cool textures and stuff. Although to be honest, it, it does look a little busy. This was also ported over to a bunch of things like the Atari 5200. Probably the most interesting one was uh, to the Sega, I think it's the, it's, it's like a Sega SG-1000 or something like that. It's like a, I wanna say it's like a J Japanese console. Anyway, Sega got the rights to remake it. So they actually developed their version of it and they changed a lot of things about it. It looks, it looks quite a bit different. It plays fairly similar, but I believe they changed the helicopter to a jetpack and some of those other things. But anyways, there are definitely multiple versions of this game out there if you're interested in it. But again, the Atari version is the original and it'll always have a special place in my heart. And here we are at level 15. I'm not doing too bad. I have two extra lives. You can see here that I'm, I'm starting to slow down a bit and have to test test the waters a little bit to see where to go. And um, that that does add or take away time from the power from your, your timer, but it's pretty tricky at this point. A lot of times like in level in parts of the level like that, where it seems like you just keep going down, see, it would be instant death. Also those magma walls that are opening and closing are such a pain in the butt. And again, these invisible levels there, you just have to, as soon as you get into a level, you have to, to very quickly try to see where to go. Here's another little tricky part where you have to fall down, get up there, drop some dynamite, shoot the bad guy, the little, I don't know whether, whether it's a snake or something like that. And then here is tricky. These are little rafts. And essentially what you have to do is start pushing up to, to wind up your, your helicopter blades when you're underneath the magma. It's very tricky to do and time it correctly. So what level is this? Level 16? Now I'm starting to reach kind of the limits of what I can do in this game. <laughs> Again, I'd love to tell you that I, I was able to beat it. Now, if you do beat the game, after level 20, it gives you pro mode. I have never did that. I, 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 I don't know, maybe uh, I'd love to hear from people who are watching this, like what it takes to, to actually beat this damn game. You know, what am I doing wrong? That, that you see here, or is it just practice, practice, practice? But, you know, I'm also starting to make some sloppy mistakes here, which is kind of pissing me off a little bit. Because it's this part right here that should be the tricky part. It shouldn't be that I start dying with these these creatures in the, uh, in the mines. But like right there, like that was a sloppy death. So now I have no extra lives. Now I'm, go I'm, now I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> but I will, I will, I will soldier on. Now we're starting to get close to the miner and oh dude, right here. Okay, so this is my second playthrough today. That right there killed me. Again, it looks so simple on on this, but you know, when you're watching it, but man, playing this game can be very tricky. So, this is level 17 here. You can tell that I'm not super familiar with it, so I went down to the left there only to realize I have to go to the right. At least this one feels okay. Actually, I think I get through this level just fine. I'm gonna get an extra life here in a second, which will help greatly, because I think I'm gonna need it. But at least no sloppy deaths at this point. These things are tricky to time. Made it, nice, all right. Oh, and then you have these tentacles that are in the water. As if you need something else to try to screw with you. See, if you get too low, it'll grab and drag you down. 
So I'm like, damn it. <laughs> now they're, they're relatively slow. So if you, if you time it right, you can do it. So that's the first time that a tentacle has shown up. And I'm, I'm very thankful at that point that I was able to get past it. And I didn't die right there. I almost got hit by the snake falling off the ledge. Okay, here's another magma and a raft. Push up, push up. Oh! Now I'm down to my last life. All right, well, at least here's the end of level 17. Here's level 18. <laughs> You'll notice that they're way faster. Check this out. See that? And death. <laughs> yep. And death. So, so that is my playthrough of Hero on the Atari... 2600, one of my favorite games of all time, blowing through it in, what, 15 minutes here. Now, I would love to get some tips from you people out there who are experts at this game, because I know that you're out there. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me how to beat Hero. All right, guys. Thanks very much for watching.